So I guess we've just seen that human beings have been making things for what, three million years, maybe? Something like that. And um, it turns out, when you think about the web, in the early days of the web, it was very clear it was a maker's world. One of the reasons the web exploded was because it started very simply, and the very simple copy and paste, or view source, were the fundamental parts. It didn't matter what page you went to, you could look at it, you could see what made it, you could use it yourself. And I remember in the very early days, this must have been maybe 95 or so, going on a plane trip, sort of cramped, you know, in those seats, and the person next to me was reading a magazine article, which I couldn't help but see, because it had the Netscape logo in it. And I worked at Netscape in that era, and was like your eyes drawn to your name. And I looked at this article, and it had various basic HTML stuff, you know, how to make a page, what a paragraph is, you know, italic, bold, and I couldn't keep my eyes off it, and finally he closed the magazine, and it was Popular Mechanics. And that moment told me that the web had arrived and it would be mainstream, because something that had nothing to do with computer science, and it had nothing to do with, quote, the internet, it was about a different variety of people who were used to making things, taking them apart and putting them together, and it was bringing the world of the internet and the web in particular to a set of people who were used to making things. And so the first generation, or maybe even two generations of the web was all about making. Recently, we're seeing that start to change. Today, much of the web is about consumption. How much can we consume and how elegantly can we consume? And I think of the iPhone and iPad series as today's pinnacle of elegant consumption. They're not particularly about teaching you to create. They can be used for that. But the core thing that draws us to them as consumers is they're beautiful, they're easy to use, and we can consume what we're interested in on them. So that is a phenomenal thing. At the same time, the maker aspect remains strong among some set of people. And for those of us who are drawn to it, or remember it, or live it, or enjoy making things in other aspects of our life, we find something both self-empowering and fulfilling in being able to look at the internet and the web and take it apart when we want to. It turns out there are a number of people in our world who don't understand that the web is just like physical objects. With some understanding and some fun and some learning, you can take it apart. You can be transparent. It doesn't have to be secret or arcane or scary. And so part of what we try to do at Mozilla is break down that barrier with young technologists who may not be technologists yet to sort of show up, whether it's in the Firefox world or a code world, to invite people in, and also to look beyond the core technologists to uh, some of the groups that we've been talking to recently and try to bring that maker ethic that many of us are familiar with in the physical world into the online world as well. It's equally possible. It's equally rewarding when you learn it. And it opens a vast array of new ideas. And some of them are very disciplined ideas. And some of them can be highly idiosyncratic. And we can actually have both high quality, disciplined piece of work like Firefox, as well as a highly individualistic analogy to the uh, arcade machines that we saw earlier. All of that's equally possible on the web. and. We hope that events like this weekend help make it more real all the time. Thank you.